Hello, my name is Olga. Today I would like to demonstrate how I am doing parking method using just one hoop and just one needle. Uh, the parking method is widely used for multicolored projects like the one I'm working on at the moment. It is a Starry Night by Van Gogh. As you can see, I'm more than halfway through. I will show you the page of the pattern with a project divided by pages. So, as you can see, I have started in the middle of the second page. I walk through the second page, third page, page number six, and now I'm working on page number five. <coughs> so, as a, I'm using the parking method, I work in little squares which are 10 by 10, as you can see on the page here. So, I first stitch all the crosses on the square 10 by 10, parking the needle, parking the thread um, with an appropriate symbol in the next square where I can see it, or moving on even higher. So, today I would like to show you how I'm doing it step by step for you to probably try to follow it and use it the way you find appropriate in your projects. <coughs> So, let's begin. I will demonstrate you the page I'm working on at the moment and then I will show you how it looks in real life on the canvas. So, here is number 5, page number 5 I'm working on the, at the moment. As you can see, I have marked the squares additionally. Uh, I'm not only marking the square I'm not only marking square 10 by 10, but I also put the dot in the very center to make process easier. I have a separate video about this method I'm using and I will refer to it in the link below. So, here where I'm coming now, I'm right now at this square. I've parked my threads, which I'm planning to use from the square I was using previously or from the other ones. So. This is the one I'm working on. As I go, as you can see, I go at the moment I go from bottom up. So in this case I have just finished this square and I will be going the square above it. So as I will continue, I will end up the I will come to the <coughs> top of the page and then I will be moving to the left and going down. So this way I'm covering the whole page as I go. Uh, this is not necessary the way it is, should be done, it is just how I do it in this very project. Sometimes people go from right, from left to right or from bottom to top. It depends on the preferences and it depends on each specific project. I'm just showing how I'm working on this one. So, if you will, uh, I will show you the square a bit closer. So you can see, sorry, this square. It has a lot of confetti stitch, so called. So a lot of threads of different color in one square, ten by ten. Uh, this project is pretty complicated. It can have up to twenty nine colors in one square. So you have to follow it very strictly. <clears throat> and here how it looks at the moment on the square I'm starting to work I'm working on at the moment. I will bring it up a bit closer for you to see. Okay. So as you can see, this is the square I'm working on at the moment this one. And I have a lot of threads which were parked from the previous squares I was working on. Not necessary from those one downstairs because here you can only see dark colors but I've moved them from the square on the right, most probably. But it depends on how often this specific color is being used. <coughs> so now I would like to demonstrate the very essence of the parking method which is stitching and parking the needle where I need to be where it needs to be placed next. 
so right now here is my needle which is which was with the thread is parked in the second from the right bottom corner and if I will sh and I will show you the pattern as well now again <clears throat> so if you will follow okay, it's a bit complicated now but okay here the square is so the second bottom from the right is this um, the thread marked with a symbol of letter L so how I normally go I see I find this uh, symbol I need this is symbol L and I stitch it and then I look up looking for the same symbol somewhere across the square I'm working on at this very moment and I normally go at this way I this um, this time I go from bottom to top so I found this symbol L and I will stitch it now and I don't see it anywhere anywhere else in the same square let me check it one again one more time yeah I don't see it anywhere else at this very square what so that means that I only have to use it in this square just once but I don't want to make just one square cut off the thread and uh, then put it somewhere else again since um, I have an X square to work on I will look up for the symbol with the letter L there and I will notice where it starts so I check the first line there is no letter L second no letter L third here I can see letter L this where it is placed so uh, as I have marked the, mm, the five square mark here as well I know that it is located just on this very line and it is right in the middle so the middle line number square number three and I will keep it in mind for uh, when I will be stitching the letter L symbol so what is my goal for now is to stitch letter L here in this corner and then park it in this very place in the next square and I am not gonna stitch it there I will just park the thread there and I will leave it the rule of thumb for parking method is that you have to choose <coughs> the corner specific corner of this very single corner of the letter L and you have to always keep the thread parked in one specific place normally I put it in the bottom lower corner so next time I will come up to this place I will know that if the thread is parked in the bottom lower corner of this square this belongs to letter L and I will start stitching from the bottom left corner to the top right corner and I will finish the square the, the cross with, from bottom right corner to top left corner so rule of thumb which is very important for you to remember is where exactly do you park your needle and it has to be consistent no matter what you park the needle in the very specific place now you may ask what will happen if there is no letter L in this next square well that's very simple you look for the next one so probably it might be here but I don't travel more than two squares at a time so if the second square doesn't have the letter L symbol and the third doesn't have it then I will probably cut off the thread and I will put it somewhere where it belongs next because I don't want to have all those long threads coming in the background because it makes the stitching project very thick like a carpet <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so uh, again it, it depends on the project and your specific preferences some people uh, prefer not to move the thread even one square so if there is no letter L here but here they would probably cut it off here and start again here but it is again very specific project specific and stitcher specific my rule of thumb I don't travel more than two squares at a time <coughs> or additional thing which I may do for example if there was letter L symbol here but none of them were here for example but I can see it happening here on the other column 
I will easily park it there and I don't really bother if it will be so I just have to follow the process I go so I will check it all the way here and if it is somewhere around the same area on the other side it's okay I will park it here <coughs> so I hope I uh, was able to explain myself correctly and understandably on the theory and now we will go to practice so one more time bottom right corner second square letter L symbol let's teach it first and then we will park it and I will show the parking way <coughs> so <coughs> I'll probably be using my left arm at the moment because I don't want to block the light but normally I'm working right hand so here I go the square L square with L symbol okay I have finished this one <clears throat> here you go and what is my goal next my goal next is to move and park it, it and park it in the appropriate place in the square above one one more time again here is the square above it this is the middle line I try to follow and it is in the very middle in the very center of the middle line square number three and it I will park the thread in the bottom left corner as I normally do it you can park it in any other corner it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with it so let's park the thread here so I'm going one square up so this square is done with this symbol for now <clears throat> here is the next symbol the next square here is the middle line I put the wrong mistaken marker here so this is the correct marker of the very center and as I told you I'm gonna put in the third from the bottom and the bottom left side here I go and since I'm using only one needle for all my threads I will unthread it now and I will thread it in the next square which is in the previous which is in the previous piece of work I'm doing so I will be threading it in here in the next one so I've finished letter L this is bottom second and I will be going this way it's just how I go I can start from the right or from the left I don't care but at this very moment I'm starting from right and going left from right to left, from bottom to top. As you can see, I have a lot of um, threads parked here from previous squares, and it is okay for me to work on it because I'm using the stand and I can use both hands. So if I need to uh, work uh, in the bottom of all those threads where there are a lot of places is covered with threads hanging, I just will take it out. I will thread it and I will be using my second my left hand to hold uh, the excess threads <clears throat> once again it is personal preferences since I take my project with me everywhere when I travel or when I just go somewhere with friends and stuff and so on uh, I don't want a lot of needles to be hanging around there a lot of needles are good to be used when you have a, a project which just stays at your house and you don't take it out at all so in this way as many people do they just thread multiple needles uh, and all those um, threads which are hanging from the parked spots they will be placed somewhere above with the needles stuck into something soft in uh, above the stand but I um, don't want this to be so I only using one thread at a time and one needle at a time and I keep on rethreading it all the way once again it is a personal preference and I only do it because I enjoy doing, doing it this way um, <clears throat> 
So now I have put the thread into the next place and I can move and I can start working on this square on this color. <clears throat> so as you can see it is not that complicated to work with the parking method. <clears throat> Just be consistent with where you park your needles, with where you park your threads, I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, number of needles you are using it's up to you. And um, I guess I have described it the way I do it normally and I don't have much things to tell on top of that. So if you have any questions about this please feel free to ask and I hope I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching this video and have a nice day. Goodbye.